Here we are today with a luxury brochure or, or picture book, a picture story book. It, and it creates a 50 page preset and template, or one or the other, or both if you like. But we're not going to go through the entire 50 pages. After all, it's your content that you'll put in there. But I'm setting up with a preset. I've also saved it as a template file. Um, and I'm also saving the AF Publisher um, working file. Put them all in a zip file and put them on a website where you can find them. Um, I'm slowly changing websites, so it won't be on the usual one, I don't think. Anyway, look in the description to find the zip file. May save you hours, because this is quite a long um, tutorial. But it's very useful. I can see it as a luxury brochure for advertising something like real estate, perhaps, or clothing. Or as a picture storybook, because each page big enough, is big enough to hold nice pictures. So if you're a designer or a writer of children's storybooks, it might be just what you need. So setting up a luxury multi-page booklet using multiple masters. Very useful. Some notes. There are four master pages and 50 document pages. Each page has multiple elements and the design is <laughs> deceptively complex with lots of hidden tweaks like colour swatches which you will create yourself and some layer options that have interesting effects. But above all, save it as a preset and a template and then you can come back to it any time you like. So let's get started, shall we? You may already know from previous videos how to set up a preset. Open Publisher, select My Presets and enter the details shown. And you can see there, when you first start entering details here, it comes up with Custom. Don't worry about the fact you can't see the size, that's on the next page. Page Height, Width, DPI, uh, Prefer Embedded, and you can change that as you to your own preferences really. Prefer Embedded or Linked, that's entirely up to you. Number of pages, 50. Default master, facing pages, and so on. CMYK, this is definitely not an ebook. It's a book for printing. Include the margins and include the bleed in that case. Now, set up your preset and rename it. And there we go. Showing the new preset. You click on that and it'll come up there. The Gemini Luxury Brochure, I've called this one. Now, take your time because there's all your settings for this page. Write those down or have this in another window. Um, I use multiple screens, um, which is a big saving. But if you've got a single monitor, well, that's all right. Just switch between the two of them. When you're happy with that and that's all right, click on Create. And up it will come with a master A page. The view here is show bleed margins and guides will automatically be selected. If you've had preview mode on, go back and select show bleed. That will turn those on automatically. So you can see all your lines, margins, guides, etc. And that's master A showing. You can see I've got it selected. There's a grey border around it. Double click on it to select it. Don't forget that. Because if you don't select the correct page you're working on, you could find you're putting in all of these entries and it's actually applying it to a different page. Make sure the page you're working on is the one you have selected. Now, adding required masters, you can add three new master pages here. There's four in total, master A, B, C and D. Normally I'd turn that off just there and I will later so that you can't see all the pages. They're just blank for the moment. Keeping in mind that I'm trying to hold this tutorial to a usable length of time, and this one I think will be about 20, 2, 3, 4, 5 minutes, somewhere in the 20 minute range. And we're going to add three new masters in total. And that's obviously, you click on that, that comes up, add master, master D, give it a name and move on. So you've got A, B, C, and D is below here. If you close that, you'll see all your master pages. Now I've renamed them all, A, B, C, and D. So you can see them straight off. They're not 
master something, master something, they're A, B, C and D. Nice and alphabetical and very easily seeable. Now we haven't got any layers in there, we're coming to that. There's your master pages created. You can see I've got pages turned off, so it hides it down there. Just click on the little triangle and it'll expand them or retract them. See, there's the, there's the triangle expanded, there's the triangle retracted. Very useful. Now, adding a layer one. Don't worry, it's blank. That layer one is blank. Now, ignore the fact I've got a few other layers in there already. I'm jumping ahead of you a little bit, but that's all right. We'll get there. But that's what it looks like. That layer one is there for a reason. These are the results of those layers there. And we'll come to that. Now, add a text box on the right and a similar box on the left. There's the right and there's the left. There's the sizes and the positions, their XY position, which is where they are on the page, and their size, width and height. They're both the same, so you can do one and copy it over there. Then use these, which you'll find down here, of course. You may already know that. I've just photocopied them, uh, screenshotted them, photocopied, as if, and put them up there so you can see them. They normally live down there. So you put your X and your Y in, that'll put it nicely there. And your size, 37, 3.1, same as there. We're working in millimetres, remember. Don't try and convert. Just set your document up in millimetres to start with. Too easy. Be international. Be able to work in inches and millimetres. <laughs> now, in this side, add the word page. And then insert a page number marker after the dash. So you've got page dash page number marker. You know how to insert a page number. You've got that text selected there, or you're in that text box, I should say. Insert fields page number. And it will put the little hash sign right there so that when you're on your pages, the hash sign is replaced by the page number. And that's master A. Set the font to Georgia regular 10 point. In that side, it's aligned right. In the left hand side, obviously, it's aligned left. Lots of There's lots of little things in there that you've got to do. So take your time with each page. Don't just rush through and say, oh yes, that looks pretty good. Take your time and you won't regret it. Now the text, the brand name, I've put the just the brand there. Brand is the company name. Or if you're doing a picture storybook, it's um, it could be a name. As we move through, you'll see I've changed the word brand or brand name to the word zoo because I may ent I may actually continue with this and turn it into a storybook myself called Zoo Station. And this is still on A Master. Georgia regular ten point. If you can't find that font on your computer, go and get it from a thousand and one fonts or somewhere like that. It's free. You don't have to pay for fonts these days. They're nearly all free. So you've got the brand name and the company name. Now all the text in these text boxes is adjusted in the Character Studio to 400% and 12 point leading, leading, sorry. That's the English language is great, isn't it? Leading and leading are exactly the same spelling, and I always confuse them. However, what that does, if you look carefully, you'll see it spreads the letters out. And there's the word zoo I put in there, nicely spread out, so it's very easily readable against whatever background you end up with on there. Now, the B Master is slightly different. It's got the brand and the page number top and bottom there and nothing over there. That will be because this side is a paler and that's a darker side perhaps. We don't know yet. But there's your measurements and your position. Your X and Y position. They, they relate to their brand and the bottom one is the page number, which is that one there, X and Y position. 
you can see its Y position is much higher than that one. So that one's there. That one puts it there. And again, Georgia regular 10 point. Now, the C master page layout is a little more complex. That there, oddly enough, is a curve. You use, where is it? You use the pen tool to draw that line there. Hold the shift key down, draw a straight line, blink, and then put it into place. That's its XY position, and that's how long the line is, 216.4 millimetres from there to there. And that's where it is, 53.8x and minus 3.2, because it goes over, or right, if, if you like, right to the edge of the bleed. So that when it's printed, it will be cut off, and you've got a nice line right across the page. There's the page number, ta-da, and the brand, ta-da. Now, something very tricky to watch. That's rotated 90 degrees there. So although you can copy them from Master B or Master A, when you put them there, rotate them. But don't use the little handle that you get on a selected text box. Use this, because you cannot get them exact with the handle. Well, if you can, you've got a steadier hand than I have. That one there, rotated 90 degrees. That's the way they sit on the page, and you can just type in there as normal. The text flows up and down that box the way it's supposed to be. Aligned left and aligned right. Very easy. The D master page, A, B, C and D. The same thing, only the other side. So you can go back to here, copy all the layers, paste them into here, so that you've got all that there. Then you go to here, with your appropriate layers selected. That's the curve. Put in your XY values. That'll pop it over there straight away. It's the same length, so instead of being somewhere on this page, wherever you paste them, you'll put it in exactly the right position. The same with page number and brand number. You'll note here that in this case, it's minus 90 degrees that's been rotated. That's so the text isn't looking out of the page, but into the page. Same here, minus 90. This side is plus 90, that side minus 90. That makes sense, doesn't it? So effectively, that's your master pages. The curve is the line, text field is the page number and the brand or book name or brochure name, whatever you like. And they all sit below a layer, just there. And that layer there again is sitting on the bottom. Uh, not doing anything in particular, but there to pack it, basically. And, but it, it does become important later. Now, the A master, that's what it looks like. The B master, that's what it looks like. Note your things over here. The C master, that's what it looks like. Note those things there and their orientation. And the D master, again the orientation, there's zoo and page number. Very nice. So your masters are set up and ready to go. Now we'll do a couple of pages and I'll leave the rest to you after that. The first four or so pages... Page 1. Make sure you double click on it. Hide your master pages. You don't need them now. You've created them. Go to Pages. Expand that. The first thing you do is double click on that. So it's highlight here. Then go to right click on it and Clear Masters. So that's obviously a master page. We don't want that. You can see it's even over there. So clear the masters. It doesn't clear all of them. It just clears the one you've got selected. Very easy. There we go. You can see there's no A master layer there. So it's cleared it out. And we've put a rectangle in there. Now you can see I've put it I've highlighted that layer. I've put the rectangle there and it's even if it pops up up there, just move it below that layer. You want it in a little group there so you can 
keep it out tucked away out of the way. Now, that color there, the fill color, remember you're on CMYK. Use your CMYK slider, but you don't need that. Just put the numbers in there. And these are the numbers of that color, 52, 64, 67, 45. And you'll see later on that what I didn't do was press the enter key and left that. That turned into a 7 for some obscure reason and changes the color there. But I did catch up with it and I did fix it. But that's how easy it is to make a mistake. Now this is page 1, remember. You've got your first rectangle on the page. Now we're doing a second rectangle. We've got that rectangle there. Again, there's all the settings, X and Y and height and width. The same as for that one. They're there if you look at them carefully. If you don't, scrub the video back and just check those sizes. Write them down or put them in, however you want to do it. Now, that colour there, the fill colour there, there's your colours there. 6770 will give you that nice beigey sort of colour. Now it's important to watch for colours because this is the colour theme throughout your document. You don't have pinks and blues and greens and red down there unless you're doing some sort of psychedelic masterpiece. But that looks very unprofessional. Keep your work professional and neat and that means keeping the same sorts of fonts and the same colour scheme through your document. Now, we've got everything on here, I think. Oh, there's lines and arrows all over the place. Fantastic. So what we've done is put a picture frame in there. That's And that, of course, as you know by now, symbolises where you're going to put an image. That's that picture frame there. That's its size and location, exact size and exact location. Of course, from down here, where you can also see it. There's your picture frame. There's its sizes. And I just added that one up there because I could. Now, there's a thing here. I've got an arrow going to replace image. If you drag an image in there and try and adjust it, it becomes a pain because it will sit outside of your picture frame um, it won't behave properly sometimes. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. I find it much easier to have your images in one place and then you can click on replace the image and it pops into that image frame very nicely. Look at that. Picture frame with image included. And if you expand that, which I can't hear of course, because this is a video not the actual live thing, but anyway, all it is is the picture sitting underneath that picture frame. It's not outside it, you haven't got boundaries over here, um, and so on. It looks very neat and comes in without any problems. Even if it's a massive picture, it sits within that frame. Now, the text I've got here is a text frame, obviously. That's beneath the picture frame, still on that layer one, beneath the picture frame and above rectangles. So it sits on top of the rectangle and it's that size, which is all your sizes there because it's selected. Location and size, the words fall. And the color of the text is again 2230. Now, you can note I've still got that darker brown colour background there. Just keep an eye on that because in the next couple of slides that will change. But for now, that there is the colour of the text in there and that's its position. Don't just put them neatly on the page and say, well, oh, I think that looks pretty right. That's about where it's supposed to be. Get it exact. And in fact, if you're keeping a log of your work, I would suggest you even type those into a notebook related to the project you're doing. Something like, what page are we on? Page 1, right hand side, text brackets, fall 22, and your X and Y and WH values. So you can come back to it and say, oops, that's what it's supposed to be. 
it depends how hmm, technical you want to be. Notice I said here the brown background is darker. I had a 7 further back there instead of the 45 it should have been. Now that's that page in preview mode. Fall 22 by Zoo Station brand brochure template. Just a couple of words. And there they are. Fall 22 by Zoo Station brochure template brand and rectangle. I haven't gone to all the trouble of telling you the exact location of those things, but they do line up down the page. That's something important to keep in mind. This is the front cover of your book. Okay? That's the first page. That's page one. It's not folding around the back because it's a different type of arrangement. Okay. Now, pages two and three, double click on that selected and apply the A master. It probably will be by default, but just to make sure, you apply it so that that definitely has the A master page applied to it. Now, there's some of our detail. And I've got this one in here because that's the rectangle there. There's two text frames. Frame text and welcome. That's frame text. That's just lorem ipsum text. And that's the welcome. Centred on the page and nicely shaped. That one there you can see is in highlight. And if you want to find where that is, there's your X and Y measurements and your width and height of that box. The welcome word is centred on that. Again, that text is aerial regular 10 point because that's that's rubbish text that's just lorem ipsum now let's move on pages two and three page content of course is your choice observe that the layer reflecting the applied master page sits above a number of other layers also note that the header one layer contains a duplicate of the top left banner in another colour. See the word zoo? Now you think, but that's in the that's in the master. Well, you can't see it. So I've had to put it in there and change its colour. And it sits above a little rectangle that's just there. It's a symbol layer. There we are, just there. Zoo and Zoo. Header 1, and there's the one I was just talking about. Sorry, I confused myself between that Zoo there. You can see it sitting on top of the little coloured rectangle. It's a symbol. You could put that in your symbol table, if you like, and keep it there permanently. There's the Header 1 layer that we had sitting there. It's got the word Zoo in it, in another colour. So you can see it there. And why is that? That's because the A master page is below that header. So you won't see that there. There's header one layer. That's the A master's expanded there. Don't alter this because that's coming from the master. There's layer one that we've been working on. With the frame, the welcome, and the rectangle. That's that rectangle, which you can see is in highlight mode there. And that's its colour, the same colour as we set before. Page 4 and 5, the layers. This is the next, the next page. Next two pages, page 4 and 5. A master shows up there because it's... Um, it has the A master applied to it. So we've got a rectangle there, which is the one that's in highlight mode. And we've got a rectangle there, which I've duplicated on top of it, just in a separate little image that I screen saved. So you can see the colours. That one there is those colours there. This one on the right hand side that is actually selected is those colours there, slightly fainter. 
I hope that's not too confusing because I had to double that one up there just to make sure that you understand it. That one's actually that one. This is a screen grab so I could display the colours. Normally that's not there, of course. Your page is there. Now, that one there, this side here, is converted to a shape. It's a text shape, or shape text if you like down here. You've got a rectangle there, and remember we put a rectangle there. Now there's a reason I want to change this, so that it shows up. It's a different colour, but you can't set the colour when it's actually shape text. So you put your rectangle in first. You can see that colour there. If you convert that to shape text to start with, and leave it selected, you won't be able to enter that material there. So don't check that. Uncheck it. The page will turn white because you won't be able to see the rectangular layer that's there. Once you've converted that to a shape layer, uncheck it. Put your table of contents in, and in this case, that's what I've done just because I know what's ahead of it there, or I think I do, and I've put that in. Then when you've done all that text, then replace the check mark. To convert a rectangular layer to a text shape, so that and you can do this with any shape. You could have a heart in there, a heart rectangle, a heart shape, which is where are we? Where are we? There we go. One of those. Click on that. Select a heart shape, put a heart shape on your page. Now, once you've done, once you've got your shape there, you then go, make sure you've got it selected, then go to the text box, text frame, click on that, and it will put a little pentagon shape in there telling you they've converted it to a text frame. It's a shape text. So it's a shape you can type text into. So you could embed a whole bunch of text within the heart shape, for example, which is part of one of the exercises in the help menu for Affinity Publisher, showing you just how to do that. I probably should have shown you here, but I don't want this tutorial to be any longer than it is, and it's going to be very long as it is. You can see I haven't got a lot of other pages created there, but let's move on anyway. Pages 6 and 7, and you can see the master applied to those. Page 8 and 9, the master applied to those changes it. So that's, I think, B master. I think that's C master. There'll be a couple of pages down here that they flip-flop backwards and forwards depending what's on the page. I've just put those there so you can see how the various master pages change. Because you, as I said before, you can have any content you like in there, and it fits in those boundaries. They're your margins. Your bleed line's down there, so you can go right out to the bleed line, if you like, with images. Don't put text outside the margins. That looks really unprofessional and ragged. The margins are there to keep your text within the boundaries. The bleed lines are there so you can take your images right out to the bleed line. But remember, when they're printed, they'll snap the guillotine that does the printing page, pages, that sets the page size, will cut along there. So you lose that fine edge. So finally, thank you for watching. Now, remember, this is suitable for a picture book, maybe children's story picture book, or a luxury brochure. Maybe you're advertising yachts or houses or luxury villas on the Amalfi Coast. Oh, too nice. Look for the downloadable zip file on my website. Now, I've got two websites, the usual one, robert-chalmers.uk, and I'm slowly moving that 
to a Wix site. So it'll be dot, a dot .com site. Um, but that's going to take some time. So just, you'll find it where you find it. And I'll put it in the description that follows this, below this video. Thank you for watching, as I say. And there we go. Luxury brochure or picture book, ideal for children's books. Thank you for watching.